Hey guys, my name is Rebecca, aka the Bodega Cat. I don't really feel like having the screen behind me today. I just want to do a more casual video, kind of. Um, I had a really cool idea the other day, and it was to try to eat certain cuisines for like a whole day. You know, kind of just to showcase that every cuisine can be veganized. You know, I thought it'd be a cool idea. Just in case uh, like you love to eat a certain way, you love to eat your culture's food and you don't really know how to veganize it, maybe this will give you ideas or it could just be entertaining. Like whatever you wanna get out of this video, I think it would be a fun time for both of us. I decided to start with Arabic food because me, you know, it's really the easiest for me because it's what I eat all the time anyway But I don't think I do a full day of eating only Arabic food. So that is what we are doing today I really hope you guys enjoy and let's start with breakfast Hey guys, so for breakfast I wanted to make ful which is like a bean breakfasty dish But I wanted to make like a more vegetable -y version you can make it without any vegetables but I wanted to make the version with like some tomatoes and peppers, stuff like that. Um, and I realized that we don't really have any vegetables in the house. So I decided to make something a little bit less vegetable heavy and I made some hummus. Making hummus is literally one of the easiest things ever. All the measurements are linked down below in my blog, but here are the basic steps. First, you rinse and drain a can of chickpeas. Then you add almost all the other ingredients. You add the tahini, you add most of the lemon juice, you add the garlic you want and the salt. Then you put the top of your food processor on and you blend it, not all the way, just a little bit, mix it up a little bit more, and then you taste it. Now you find out whether it needs more lemon juice or more water, because it's gonna need a little bit more liquid, but you wanna know whether you want that liquid to be just unflavored or a little more lemony. After you blend it the last time and the texture is like this, you are done. With that hummus, I would normally make a sandwich with tomatoes and cucumbers, but again, no vegetables in the house. Don't worry, after I eat breakfast, I'll go get some. Uh, so instead, I put romaine lettuce in my sandwich. So uh, pita bread with hummus and vegetables is a really common Arabic food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, whatever. Sometimes we make it into a sandwich. Sometimes we make it into like a roll up. Sometimes we just uh, put hummus on the plate and dip bread into it until we're full. So how could I do a eating Arab food for a day without eating hummus? It's like, it's a necessity. Uh, a lot of you guys have made my mom's hummus recipe and love it. So it's gonna be down in the blog, uh, down below. Actually, I'm gonna try to put all of today's recipes in the blog down below, so hopefully I get to that. But yeah, for breakfast, I'm just having this pita. This is a thin pita, it's not my favorite. I like a thicker pita, but you know, quarantine, you, you, you just eat what you can, you eat what you can get your hands on. But, um, mm, it's so garlicky and creamy and delicious. 10 out of 10. Okay, so lunchtime. Turns out my mom went grocery shopping, so she got a lot of things I was gonna go out and buy anyway, which means I was able to make full, and here was that process. I'm gonna try to have this recipe on the blog too, but you start out with one can of fava beans, rinse and drained, half a pepper, a tomato, and a small onion, or half a regular onion. Dice up all your veggies. You want them super tiny, so you're not having like full bites of veggies, just so they flavor the beans when you cook them down. And once they are all diced, you put a pan on the stove, throw a little bit of oil on there, and then dump all your veggies and cook them down. This maybe takes five minutes, maybe more. Just keep going till they're kind of mushy, kind of like this. Once your veggies are appropriately mushy, you add your beans. And after you add them, you kind of smush them around. Um, to kind of make a paste, you just take your spoon and smushy smush smush until almost all the beans are broken. You don't want too many whole beans in there, just like this. Next come the spices. I put cumin, salt, and garlic. You could have added fresh garlic at the beginning too, but I was lazy. Then you mix it up, add a little bit of water to thin it out, and then add a lid, and maybe simmer it for three to five minutes until it starts looking like this. Then you just turn the heat off, and you are done. Ta-da! I am absolutely drooling, and if you haven't um, noticed already, most Arabic vegan food is uh, different ways to eat beans and pita bread. I'm not mad at it, um, it's just how it is. Let me show you my plate. Here we are, here's the fool that we just made. I have some Persian cucumbers on the side, I have some pickled Persian cucumbers over here, and then I have a pita loaf that I cut into quarters right here, and then you take the pita and you like scoop up the fool. Let me show you. 
Okay, I'm sitting on my floor because this is the best angle to give this demonstration. So here it is. First off, let me get a piece of pita. Need two hands for that. You get a piece of pita about this big, right here. And then you hold it in your hand, kind of like this with your thumb in the middle. And then you scoop up your fool like this. And then you eat it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. and this is gonna be my lunch. All right, I've been working um, on editing videos and stuff like that. I just have a really busy day today. I got a little bit sleepy, so I went for a little pick-me-up. Um, it's super common in my family slash, I think for all Arabs, to eat dried fruits as snacks. So I have some dried figs. We also had dates downstairs, but I wasn't craving dates. Um, dried plums right here and some walnuts. And my mom keeps walnuts in the freezer for some reason. So these are frozen walnuts, but walnuts have such a high fat content. They don't even freeze like that. So it's kind of just like cold walnuts. So yeah, I have a little, little container of a dried fruit. And this is gonna be my snack for the day. I haven't had dried fruits and nuts as a snack in a long time. It's so satisfying. Oh, and something else I would eat as a snack. Take a date, open it up, take the seed out, and then stuff it with pecans or walnuts or pistachios or any kind of nut that you want. Or peanut butter, that's, that, that's freaking delicious. That's another really good snack too. Also, the those fruits and nuts is gonna count as my pre-workout because it's really carb heavy and it should fuel my workout even though I'm having a sleepy day today. It is raining, the wind is blowing, and okay, maybe I'm crazy, I have a question. Do any of you get sleepy when you have makeup on? Like I'm just sitting here working and I was like, I know I will wake up if I take my makeup off. Am I crazy? That's a thing. Like if I take my makeup off, sometimes I like wake up and it's not, has nothing to do with me washing my face. I like feel the makeup on my eyes and it makes them kind of like, eh. I don't, maybe I'm crazy. I could be just crazy. So I might just like take my makeup off because I like I kind of wanted to look cute for this video, but I'm gonna work out soon anyway. So I think maybe I'll just take my makeup off and that'll wake me up. Oh my goodness, I I can't wait till gyms are open again. I hate hit workouts. I hate jumping around. I hate air squats. I hate lunges. I hate burpees and push-ups. All all of that. I hate it. I hate it. But I try to move my body for 20, 30 minutes a day. Just get the blood flowing or whatever. So I'm gonna take a shower and then we're gonna eat our next. Arab meal. Well, hello. Welcome to a corner in my room that I don't usually shoot in, but I was hoping the lighting would be better. I don't know. I just don't know how to get good lighting in my room after six or seven because I don't have like stage lights. I'm not that fancy of a YouTuber yet. Ready for dinner. Today we are having a falafel wrap. Here we go. Uh, the wrap on the outside is actually pita, so that means I've eaten pita bread three times today. I just, you know what? I didn't realize when choosing the meals for today that three of them had pita bread, okay? Arabs don't eat this much pita bread. I mean, they eat a lot of pita bread. <laughs> um, we do eat stuff like rice and couscous and stuff like that, but it just, just so happened that I ate pita bread three times today. Sue me. Um, so over here we have pita bread. We have some falafels in there. We have lettuce, tomato, onions, and tahini sauce. Uh, I don't know about other parts in the Middle East. I know when you usually get falafel at a cart or whatever, they serve it with like a yogurt sauce sometimes. I never grew up eating it with a yogurt sauce. That is so weird to me. I always grew up eating it with a tahini sauce, so that is what I'm doing today. And before you ask, I don't have a falafel recipe for you. My grandma is the falafel queen in my house and we're currently quarantined apart so she can't really show me how to make it because as most Arabs do, she cooks by eye. So she really couldn't like translate that recipe over to me if it's not in person. So instead of making these falafel from scratch myself, I actually ordered them from a local Arabic food store, which there are so many Arabic food stores, Middle Eastern food restaurants, food stores, 
There are so many Middle Eastern slash Arab restaurants in Bay Ridge, so I had a lot of options to choose from. Mmm. For not being my grandma's falafel, that's actually really good. I'm happy. For dinner, there is no pita bread. I decided to have a quinoa salad, and I usually eat this salad in lettuce boats, but today I decided to eat it with a side of green onion and some dandelion leaves. And here is how you make that. You start off with fine cracked wheat or burgul, depending on where you're gonna buy it, and then you add in your tomato sauce watery base. Um, you mix it all together and you let it soak until the cracked wheat fully soaks up the liquid and becomes soft. After it's done soaking, you chop up your tomatoes and your parsley and you throw that in, mix it in really well. Honestly, the ratios don't matter so much. It's mostly by eye, but I'll put measurements on my blog if you want to follow it. Then you add what's supposed to be green onion, but I didn't have any, so I used white onion, some olive oil, some salt, and some lemon juice. Just mix it up thoroughly and then put it in the fridge to eat the next day because it's always better marinated. All right, that concludes an entire day of me eating Arabic food. Was that entertaining? Did you guys like that? Let me know. I just kind of wanted to showcase that you can veganize your own ethnic food and eating vegan food doesn't mean giving up your culture. I think I'm planning to do Mexican food next. Let me know what kind of Mexican food you would like to see me eat. If you are Mexican, please DM me your favorite recipes on Instagram. Please, I need the help, because I am not Mexican. And let me know what other cuisines you would like to see me eat for a day. That being said, I really hope you guys like this video. Like if you like, subscribe if you wanna subscribe. If you wanna follow me on Instagram where I post every single day, I'll put my Instagram right here. And that is all I have for today. I will talk to you next time. Goodbye! Shout out to all my patrons, but especially my bodega bosses and my OG bodega babes. Jessica, Christina, Marlene, Lucia, Alex Creates, Alan, Michelle, Laura, Kaylin, Marielle, Alex, the Planet Earth, Nicole, Juanita, Emily, Jenny, Marcia, Charlotte, Gemini, Curtis, Stacy, Janine, Michelle, Eduardo, Chloe, Erica, Danny, and Vanessa. You guys are the absolute best, and these videos are made possible with your support. If you want to support me non-monetarily, then just subscribe and stick around to watch another video. It shows YouTube that you like my content.